So in this question, we are given some components, or at least partial components, of four vectors. For example, the first vector has x and y components of 20 and 60. We've called that vector vector a, so we're going to fill in positive 20 for the x component and positive 60 for the y component. The next vector has an unknown x component and a known y component. We'll fill in b sub x for the x component and negative 70 for the y component. And then we just proceed in a similar manner. So the next vector has an x component of negative 20 and an unknown vector in the y direction of c sub y and then we have the final vector whose components are both known they're negative 60 and negative 70. Now the question notes that we start out at the origin and then we end at the following coordinates right here so those turn out to be the components of the resultant vector so we can actually fill those into our table we have negative 140 and then 30. And what's nice about using the table is it helps us keep things organized. We would know that the sum of the x components, so those four x components, must equal the resultant x component. So in the x direction, we can set up the following equation. We could say that 20 plus b sub x minus 20 minus 60 has to equal negative 140. And of course, this is a very easy equation to solve. The 20s would cancel, and then we would add 60 to both sides, we can see that the x component of vector b is equal to negative 80. And that was measured in meters, and so this is the correct answer to part a of the question. Now we're going to set up a similar looking equation for the y components. We're going to add those four y components together and then set that equal to 30. And we can solve this equation pretty nicely for c sub y. We have 60 minus 70, negative 10, and then minus 70 is negative 80. So you have c sub y minus 80 is equal to 30. And then we add 80 to both sides of this equation. And we can see that c sub y is equal to 110 meters. And this would be the correct answer to part b of the question. In part c, we are asked to find the magnitude of the overall displacement. Now, recall, the resultant has x component of negative 140 and a y component of positive 30. So what we're gonna do is put down a new coordinate system here. We'll start out at the origin, and we're going to go along the x-axis a distance of negative 140. So notice we're actually traveling along the negative x-axis, and that magnitude is 140 meters. There's no need to put a negative sign on that, because we've shown by pointing the vector to the left that we are moving in the negative x direction. And then recall that the y component was positive 30. So because it's positive, we're going to move up the positive x axis. We're going to label that 30 meters. Now, the resultant will simply be a third vector starting at the origin and ending at the tip of that y component. So that is our resultant. We can call that R with a little vector symbol above it. And look, we have a right triangle. So it's quite easy to solve for R because we could just apply the Pythagorean theorem. For example, we could say that vector R squared, or indeed just the magnitude, when you're plugging into the Pythagorean theorem, we're just going to use the magnitude because that's all we're looking for in this question, part C. And then that's going to equal 140 squared plus 30 squared. So let's just pick up our calculators, simplify the right-hand side, you're going to get 20,500. And then, of course, on the other side, we still have this magnitude of vector r squared. We want to solve for the magnitude of r, so we just take the square root of both sides. And when we do that, we can see that the magnitude of vector r is approximately 143 meters. So this is the correct answer to part c. And finally, in part D, we want to find the direction of this vector. So the direction would mean we need to find that angle right there. Now, let's study that right triangle carefully. And we can see that the tangent of that angle would equal the side that is opposite of that angle, which is 30, divided by the side that is adjacent to that angle, which is 140. Now, remember, to solve for theta, you actually need to do the inverse tangent of that 30 to 140 ratio. So we just pick up our calculators again and we punch in the right hand side and we get about 12 degrees but we want to make sure that we report this answer carefully. You can't just say 12 degrees because that's a little bit vague. So one thing you could do is you could say that it is 12 degrees clockwise from the negative x-axis. That's a bit of a mouthful but if you look 
carefully, that should make some sense because here is the negative x-axis, and if you were going 12 degrees clockwise, you would sweep out an angle right there. There's that angle theta. So this would be an appropriate way of reporting the angle, but sometimes you also want to report the angle relative to the positive x-axis. And so we can see that that angle right there could be another theta that we could report. Now ask yourself, how could I find that theta? Maybe we'll call it theta prime to distinguish it from theta. Well, hopefully you understand that all you would have to do is take this 180 degree angle and subtract theta. So theta prime would be 180 minus 12. And when we punch that in, we're going to get 168 degrees for theta prime. That would be measured counterclockwise, counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Just make sure that makes sense again. Start from the positive x-axis right here, let's say, and then go 168 degrees. And if you did that, you would land right there. You would land right there, and that's exactly where vector r is located. And so either this form for theta or this form for theta would be acceptable. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so.